So today I thought I'd take you through all the steps that you need to do to do your very first block print. Um, I've split this video into two different videos actually. So this video that you're watching right now is the design and carving stage. And the next video is the actual printing stage. So there's a few things that you need to gather before we get started. You need some sort of paper. I'm using a sketchbook today, but any sort of paper that you draw on will work. It could be printer paper, anything like that. I have some tracing paper. This is not mandatory, but it's something that is particularly handy if, uh, if maybe you feel like your drawing skills aren't quite up to par or if you have a particularly uh, complex block print. You need a pencil, which is for the drawing and the tracing stage, um, and to transfer your drawing onto a block. You'll need a block. I recommend, if you're a beginner, using some sort of a soft cut block. This is a Moo Carve. Um, I have a video that goes through all the different supplies, um, a lot more in depth um, for beginners um, on my blog, so you can go check that out. I have the link down below. Uh, this is nice and soft. You might uh, have the pink block that is from Speedball. I think it's called Speedy Carve. When you're a beginner, it's easiest to uh, start with using a nice soft block rather than the harder lino. It's just easier to carve. You kind of get the, the gist of what the process is before you start getting into the um, supplies that are maybe a little more tricky to use. And then you'll need a carving tool. And this is what you're probably going to use as a beginner. And this is Speedball. There's a couple other brands. And it's just a little carving tool. And it has in the little base of it, a few more sizes of, of blades. Okay, so let's get started. I've chosen for this project just a simple banana palm leaf, and it's nice, it's fairly easy to draw, so if, uh, if this is what you want to kind of imitate, it shouldn't be too, too hard to draw, um, and it gives us a couple, um, a couple examples of concepts that you need to keep in mind when you're designing. So, when you're designing what you want for your block, you have to think of things in basically in black and white. A lot of lino uh, or block prints is done in a single color printed onto another, onto a piece of paper. So it's your color, in this case, I have black marker on white paper. So when you carve this onto your block, you're gonna be rolling ink onto that and printing it most likely in one color onto um, a piece of paper. So think about where where you want color. Where you want color is going to need to be the raised part on your block. So with the banana leaf, I sketched this out and when you're a beginner you'll want to sketch out a lot more but once you have a couple you know couple projects under your belt you can start uh, sketching out less if you once you start feeling more comfortable comfortable with doing that or you can always completely plan out your block. So with this I've I want the the stem part to be in color so that's in there and then I want of course the leaf itself with all of the the little tears that appear on a palm leaf. I want those to kind of be the the shape. And then I've added in a space that we'll we will carve away and that's the edge of this stem because if I didn't put something in there to define where this stem is it would just be one one block of color and uh, that's fine if that's what you want for your style but uh, a lot of times you'll want to add details that aren't necessarily white in the subject matter but have those details in white in your block so once you've drawn out your design, I initially drew, drew it out with a pencil. You can leave it at that. I colored it in with marker after I did that, did that so that you could see it a lot more easily. And then I took tracing paper and I just traced it. Simple as that. Um, you can do it in a couple of different ways. I've just done the outline because I can go back and reference, um, as I'm carving, reference the, the original drawing. You can fill in all the dark areas with your pencil as well if, if you want to make sure you don't forget what part you're carving away. Because the problem with uh, block prints is once you carve away something that you didn't mean to carve, well, that's for the most part, it's 
gone. There's not a whole lot you can do, especially with a soft cut. There's some tricks with the uh, more traditional lino that you can do, but with a soft cut, once it's gone, it's gone. So if you're a little nervous this first time, you can just fill this in with pencil so you know what is staying and what is not. So now we're going to transfer this over to the block. So you just take your block. Now you might look at your block and go, well, which side is the right side? I always choose the smoothest side. And depending on the block you're using, it can be really obvious or it can be a lot less obvious. Now, if it's a lot less obvious, that means probably either side will work. Um, the other thing is you don't have to choose the smoothest side. It's just when you print, you might see some of that texture. So it's not the end of the world if you, if you put it on the wrong side, but I always aim for putting your print or putting your block, what you're carving onto the smoothest side. Okay, so now let's see which side. Now you put your tracing paper with the pencil down and you put it down against your block. Now with this image and most images, you'll probably want it to be fairly centered on your block. Originally when I did this, when I, um, this or this block originally was a lot larger. And before I did my design, I actually set down the block and traced it. So this was the original size. I cut it down because I don't want, I want to be able to use the rest of this block for another project. Okay, so now pencil side down, centered on the block. If you have a block that's quite large, that let's say it's this big and you haven't cut it down yet, just put it sort of towards the edge with enough space so that you can kind of carve around it and then you can cut it later. Okay, so I've laid that down and I just rub it with the back of my finger. You can use different things that you might have laying around. Sometimes you use the side of a remote. I have a bone folder for your scrapbooker. You might have one of those laying around, but you can just use your the back of your thumbnail. Now, make sure as you're doing this, the tracing paper doesn't move. Now I can pull it up and I can see how well it transferred before I pull it up and it looks like it transferred pretty well. So I'll just put the tracing paper away. And now, you don't need the pencil anymore either. Now we are ready to carve. So, before you carve, a couple of safety tips. Always carve away from you, no matter what you do. Never put your hand here and then carve towards your hand because you will eventually cut yourself no matter what, you will. Um, and the other thing, I don't, I'm not using a uh, bench hook today, but a bench hook is a really great idea if, if you find that your block isn't particularly stable on the surface, like if it slides, this is pretty grippy because it's really rubbery and the surface uh, works well with this or the surface of this table, but you might find that it slides a lot in which case you want something to brace against um, just for safety. Um, I do have a blog post that's all about safety when carving, so you can take a look at that as well. Okay, so let's start with our first carving. Now I've taken the smallest blade and put it into here. I always start with your smallest blade for the first one because you can get around through all of these details and also understand that it's not necessarily going to look exactly like this once you carve it because the blade size will affect that you might you know accidentally slip and then you have to just make that work somehow um so just don't be too too in love with your drawing because it'll it'll change maybe slightly maybe quite a bit by the time you finish carving it so Essentially what you do is you want to carve one full outline around the item, whatever you're carving. And I just do uh, one outline of the main, main drawing. And you want to hold your carving tool so that, you know, depending on the size of your carving tool, I have it kind of nestled in my palm and I have my fingers back here and hold it 
I'm not sure exactly what, how many degrees it is, but you don't want it to be too high because you're not poking, you're not gouging, and you want it to be maybe a little bit above horizontal, so lower than 45 degrees. And you just do start carving and gently press. And don't do too long of a, a carve each time because uh, that can cause issues with slipping. You can, you know, you, it's just a lot easier to get carried away and accidentally take away something that you didn't mean to. So we started, do another one. And essentially that's the start of it. And we'll just keep going. Remember always carve away from yourself. The one thing with this, uh, the rubbery soft carve material is it can kind of get stuck like that and you just kind of stretch it out. You can also, when you carve, you do your carving and then at the last second, you just kind of go up and then sometimes it will carve or break nicely or cut nicely. Now everything outside of the banana leaf here is going to go away. So when you come to a corner like this, you can actually like just carve like that if that is more comfortable for what you're doing. And you can kind of make little wiggly, um, little wiggly carves to get your shape. Now I have a little, it's a little bit hard to see, but I have a little, uh, a little tear in here that I want to of course carve. So I'm going to start from inside, the inside of there and just carve outwards. And I'm gonna carve on that side. And there we go, we've got a little, a little indent there. And we'll clean that up after. You can do little turns like that. And another little torn area. So you can kind of wiggle your, your carving tool to get nice curves. I'll just speed up the video because the rest of this is just, or the rest of this first outline is just kind of keeping going with what I've been doing already. Okay, one thing what, when I approach this stem, if you carve this way, and then accidentally slip, I could accidentally lop off the bottom of the stem, which would be a little bit disastrous for this design. So what I'm going to do is come from the inside again and carve outwards. And that way if I slip, I just lose something that I'm going to be carving away anyways. Now, just finish off this stem. There's the end of it. Okay, so now we've done one full channel around there. Now we started with our smallest one. Um, let me just take a look at the other blades. So the next size up that I have, it's pretty big. So before I change my blade out, I'm going to do some of the smaller details that are on the inside. So we have this edge of the, uh, the inside of the stem. So I'm gonna do that next. Now, for something like this, you want to go fairly slowly, especially when you're a beginner, because you don't want to accidentally um, cut a hole or cut right through your stem. 
So you just do little pieces, follow along where your drawing was. If you're a fairly skilled drawer, you can do this just by eye. And there we go, we've got that detail carved in. Now, next up, I wanna, before I change my blade out again, I wanna make sure that uh, all these little tear pieces are nice and cleaned out. Because, especially these particularly narrow ones, because the next size up might be too big. I might carve out more than I want. So I'm just going to start cleaning out these areas inside that I want to be white when I print. So we want the paper to show through and show these little tears in the leaf. Okay, so I think that is okay. So I'm just gonna change out my blade. Okay, so I've swapped out my blade. This one is another V. Um, and the nice thing about the V is if you only put it down into your block a little bit, you can have somewhat small um, of a carving that you carve out, or you can go a bit deeper and you can have a wider space that you take out. So now I'm going to do another full channel, um, full outline around what I've already carved. Now you want to go just on the outside of what you carved. You don't want to go on the inside because if you go on the inside, you're gonna carve away what you don't wanna carve away. So remember everything that you take away is where the paper will show. And it's essentially the same process, but as you can see, that's substantially deeper um, and also wider, wider uh, carve. Just gonna go gently against that again. Sometimes there's a little bit of um, extra, like a really thin part that didn't quite come away that I wanted to come away. So just carve just like you did before, holding so that it's uh, slightly above, I guess, horizontal. You'll find kind of the exact angle that you find flows nicely and works best for you. and move the block to make it work for this, the direction that you're carving in, because that really helps you uh, keep from carving towards yourself because you never, ever, ever want to carve towards yourself. If there's one rule in line of cut, which you will probably accidentally break and then, and then you'll regret it one day. Now you might've noticed there, I went past all these torn pieces. Uh, are torn sections, which is fine. You can always come back in and kind of clean things out a little bit. Now I'm gonna go into these little torn areas just a little bit with the wider tool. Um, sometimes that can help kind of clean out what's in there, but I'm really cautious to not go very deep because I don't want to accidentally take out too much. At the end of the world if you take out a bit more than uh, you mean to with this particular design because banana leaves are imperfect that's why it's a great beginner project so i'm just kind of cleaning that out as best as i can now if you don't perfectly clean it out that's also fine too because um, with block prints having a little bit of um, it's called noise which is little bits that aren't really part of the purposeful design, but are there when you actually print. Um, just little flecks and things like that. That's called noise and uh, that can be part of the beauty of lino cut. Okay, so now I've done a full carving around. I've gone and cleaned out the inside of the torn part of the leaf. And I think I'm going to leave Remember I carved this with the thin tool. I think I'm just gonna leave it thin. So now I'm gonna change my blade one more time to this, uh, it's a U gouge. So I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this is a V and this is a U and it's great for clearing away large areas. So I'll just change out my blade. 
Okay, new blade is put in and I'm ready to start with uh, clearing away all of this area around here that I don't want as part of the print. So essentially you go around your outline and you can see that is a lot wider than the previous one. So it's great for clearing away large areas. So you notice there, I went too deep and I actually went underneath. You do not want to do that. So um, just keep that in mind as you're carving. It's a bad habit that I have of going too deep. Not the end of the world, but it can help or it can cause issues with tearing, especially once you move into the uh, traditional lino, it can cause um, it to be not as sturdy of a uh, carving. So just keep carving. Remember, always carve away from you. And you'll just keep doing outlines until you've carved away all this area that you don't want to print. Just one note that I wanted to give as I'm carving this. You want to make sure that you're getting rid of any areas that you want to be completely white. You want to make sure that there isn't um, rubber that's sticking up too high in that area. So I kind of go and cut, you know, half new and half into the old area, and that can really help reduce the amount of that. One note, as you're getting to the edges, especially with this uh, softer cut, it can be really hard to cut through because it's, it loses its, uh, its sturdiness as you get to the end. So one habit that I have, which you shouldn't do, is cutting like that, pressing towards your finger. But what you should do is just go around once along the edges. And then when you go to uh, cut here, it's a lot easier. Edges are always a bit of an issue. If you're using a bench hook, it can be a little bit easier because you can carve right up into the bench hook. Okay, so I fully carved around, I've cleared away um, a layer of everything that I want to be white on the outside. And now before I move on to the final step of printing it, I often will turn it on its side and kind of just see three dimensionally where I think the, when I roll the ink out onto it, where I think it might catch some of these ridges. And then I just clean those away. So it can be a bit tricky to see um, but you'll just kind of get used to where you think um, is going to be a trouble spot when you go to print and where it won't be. So I'm just doing some extra around the edges here and in a few other spots. And just remember the actual block itself, they're, they're really beautiful looking, but they also aren't the art that you're producing. It's going to be um, the the actual paper print is going to be the art that you're uh, creating out of this. So it doesn't have to be a perfect looking block, um, but they are, I have to admit, they are quite cool looking. So I'll just keep cleaning out just a little bit more. And at this stage, just kind of remember what you're doing um, because it can be easy to get carried away and accidentally go whoop and carve right into what you didn't want to carve, what you wanted to stay there. So just be careful, make sure you're, you're remembering what you're up to. Okay, so I think it's ready to be printed. So you can head on over to the next video in this series to see what the next steps are to create your very first lino print.